comedian Kathy Griffin's life changed forever in May 2017 when she tweeted a photo of herself holding up a ketchup-covered Halloween mask of Donald Trump in a mock beheading that caused widespread outrage and disgust. The president himself shamed Griffin on Twitter, sparking an unprecedented wave of fallout that sent Griffin into hiding for the better part of a year. After being dropped from her annual gig as co-host of CNN's New Year's Eve coverage, Griffin also lost a sponsorship deal and watched the last half of her stand-up comedy tour evaporate before her eyes. Although she's back in the saddle with a successful stand-up tour, the controversial comedian is still being affected by the aftershock of the Trump photo scandal. Let's take a peek inside Kathy Griffin's life today. Spilling Tea Griffin initially apologized for the Trump photo and then retracted that apology. I'm no longer sorry. The whole outrage was BS. The whole thing got so blown out of proportion, and I lost everybody. Not long after, Griffin let loose on some powerful men from her past whom she felt had wronged her. In a scathing October 2017 YouTube video, Griffin first dragged TMZ founder Harvey Levin, alleging his close backroom ties to Donald Trump led to a smear campaign against her that she felt intensified the fallout from the photo scandal. She then took aim at Andy Cohen and Jeff Zucker, her former bosses at Bravo. Griffin relayed the story of how, when she asked Zucker for a raise, he allegedly became so enraged at her audacity that he threatened to fire her, forced her to tearfully beg to keep her job, and then actually cut her pay by 20 percent. Griffin accused Cohen of harassing her and treating her very poorly during her time at Bravo. She also alleged that he offered her cocaine before two appearances on Watch What Happens Live. Back on tour After watching her already-in-progress U.S. stand-up tour evaporate in the wake of the Trump photo scandal, Griffin had a lightbulb moment. According to a May 2018 interview with The Globe and Mail, she told her reps, "...send me to countries where they hate Trump." She then kicked off the Laugh Your Head Off tour with shows in 23 cities and 15 countries, for which she claimed she received a standing ovation at every gig. On a March 2018 episode of Real Time with Bill Maher, Griffin revealed that her American comeback was fully underway with two shows, quote, right in Trump's backyard at the Kennedy Center and Carnegie Hall in New York City. She told the Vancouver Sun, "...this photo will be with me the rest of my career and will be known when I leave this earth more than anything." No Fly List Griffin was cleared of the two-month federal investigation over whether she had actually conspired to assassinate Trump. Yes, it was that serious. But she claimed she remained on the no-fly list, which tracks the movements of known and potential international criminals. As a result, Griffin says she was detained at every airport she flew into for her recent international tour, which sometimes resulted in the confiscation of her belongings and always meant big delays and frightening encounters in what she called detention rooms. You might think, you know, we all have our rights, but when you're in that moment, you're really at the mercy of one or two people in that room. Ex-BFF Not only was it a big professional blow to Griffin when her CNN New Year's Eve show co-host Anderson Cooper denounced the Trump photo on Twitter and turned his back on her, it was also extremely personal. I loved him. Like, yeah. I really loved him. And so the Anderson part, I, I, I don't even have a joke for it because, that, honestly, that one just hurt. In an interview with Wendy Williams, Griffin revealed that she and Cooper didn't speak for a period of two months after the Trump photo and still do not have a relationship. Griffin joked to Bill Maher that she was, quote, down to three gays when describing how ostracized she felt by her former social circle. But she revealed to Wendy Williams that she got some very high-level support from the likes of Amy Schumer, Bette Midler, and Martin Sheen. Even Jim Carrey reached out to congratulate her on snagging the kind of juicy material that any comedian would love to have. According to Griffin, Carrey told her, "...you can present it comedically however you want, and you're the perfect person for that." It is the job of a comedian to cross the line at all times. You've got hate mail. Griffin says the violent threats she's received in the mail have gotten so bad that the FBI had to intervene after, quote, "...determining that Griffin was under credible threat." The comedian told The Hollywood Reporter about a system devised by the Bureau that was designed to help her sort her terrifying mail. She shared, "...there's a pile that we think is harmless and a pile that's questionable. And then there's a pile that the FBI says you put in a Ziploc bag and give to them. That's my life now." Griffin even said that this kind of verbal harassment was the main reason for all of her initial tour cancellations, since her detractors also began calling her scheduled venues and threatening physical harm to Griffin while she was on stage. Supporting Stormy Given that Griffin is, shall we say, not a fan of Donald Trump, it probably doesn't come as a surprise that she rallied behind adult entertainer Stormy Daniels' crusade to expose her alleged affair with the president. Griffin's first overture to Daniels came via Twitter when she announced that she would contribute $2,500 to the whistleblowing adult film star's legal defense fund. Griffin tweeted, "...I know what it's like to go up against the Trump machine. You're very brave to do this, and I want to do my part." Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.